Good morning, and a very warm welcome to morning prayer from St. Mark's Church. This is for Saturday, the 29th of August. Let us pray. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 30 I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. And did not let my enemies gloat over me. The Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment. But his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night. But rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I shall never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praise and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today comes from Ruth. Chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Meanwhile, Boaz went up the town gate and sat there when the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along. Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, Sit here. And they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back to Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me so, so I will know for no one has the right to do it except you. And I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. And Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth 
the Moabites. You acquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. At this, a kinsman redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, Thyself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, Today you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian and Mahlon. I have also required Ruth, the Moabites, Mahlon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear <clears throat> from among his family, <coughs> I'm sorry, or from the town records. Today, you are what is. Then the elders and all those at the gate said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home, like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, May your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Well, to date, we have followed the story of Ruth a Moabites who is loyal to her mother-in-law and has made the journey from her own country of Moab to Bethlehem in Judah, taking on the role of daughter to Naomi, very badly affected by the death of her husband and two sons. But although Naomi had done everything possible to send her daughters back to, Do to Moab, Ruth cleaved to her mother-in-law. We're not told what insight Ruth has about the God of Israel, but we surely know that Ruth has offered herself not only loyalty, but to worship the God of Israel. So Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem, and Ruth was accepted by all the women. Whether Naomi may have been thinking of the outcome of Ruth, as they were traveling together, we don't know, but she certainly wasted no time in finding out who Ruth's were that she gleaned. And so she realized that she'd been working in the field of Boaz, a relative, coincidence, and that Naomi knew the name of this man and that Ruth was made welcome by Boaz. Another coincidence, she set about scheming. And Ruth may not have felt entirely easy or comfortable with Naomi's instruction, which was a long Israelite custom to proceed with the possibility of Boaz becoming kinsman. But Nevertheless, she remained obedient to Naomi. And so we pick up the story today. Naomi and Ruth, two widows who have a difficult road ahead with no man 
to look after them. So this would have been inbuilt in Naomi as she schemed and plotted the next step. So far, Ruth had been compliant with her mother-in-law's requests, but she knew that what Naomi was asking her to do was for their future security. She may not have been obliging otherwise. Naomi realised that Boaz was her guardian redeemer. It was his duty to take, take car, care, sorry, take care of his extended family. Of course, Naomi was too old to become a bride, bride and mother, so she dedicated this next task to Ruth. A guardian redeemer was a close relative who would marry the widow, Ruth, of a relative, Naomi, providing the relative had no more sons. Under normal circumstances, when a son died, his widow would marry the next living son, who is his brother, so as to continue the family name to bear children of that family and then the name of her first husband and the, the children Kilion and Marlon would not be eradicated from history. Naomi, Naomi set about her task of making this come through and Ruth abandoned her own feelings, or what might have been her own feelings, to go and lay down at the feet of Boaz. And it says it was, it would be normal for his servant to do such a thing. So the action was furtive and no one must know about it. Perhaps spoiling, not wanting to spoil Boaz's attempts to procure being kinsman redeemer. So Boaz went to the town gate to wait for the guardian redeemer, who was the rightful guardian redeemer, to come along. And the town gate was the best place to conduct this business as it was where everyone entered and left the town. So Boaz was sure to meet this man. And at the same time, he selected a number of townsfolk to become witnesses of what would be the agreement. Now it's Boaz's turn to show his plotting, but more in the way of wisdom as to what he must realise would happen when the subject was approached to the guardian redeemer. So one could say he was like an advocate for Naomi and Ruth and he had his courtroom witnesses seated close so they could hear the transaction that would take place. And he made the rightful guardian redeemer aware of the piece of land that he owned as belonging to its kinsmen and therefore he alone had the right to make the decision first and Boaz was second in line and so he waited for the man's reply which was yes I will redeem it but then came the crunch or sting that Boaz was hoping would happen. Boaz reminded him that if he did purchase the land, he was obliged to marry Ruth the Moabitess, widow of Marlon. The man had no hesitation. He dropped it. He dropped his claim as if it was a hot potato. He may have realised that if he married Ruth, some of his estate 
would be transferable to Elimelech's family if he had a son. So the guardian redeemer changed his agreement to buy the land and agreed that Boaz should redeem it. And he removed a shoe, which was another custom to show the transaction had taken place. I'm not quite sure what it meant to remove a shoe, whether it meant the land that was duly the man's right to walk on had now become Boaz's right to walk on, and therefore that shoe became his. Um, I've got no evidence for that or why that happened, but nevertheless, there is some connection with it. And so the connection, um, along with this Boaz had chosen, sealed the transaction, and then Boaz made public that he was to marry Ruth, so that Elimelech's name, nor his sons, Marlon and Kilian, <laughs> would be lost from their family, nor from the records of his hometown in the annals of history of Israel. So the marriage of Boaz and Ruth was supported by one at the gate that day, and he received such a blessing from them. And what would follow was also a blessing from them and the deed was done. Now, I'm going to close here at this state, at this stage of, of what was going to happen next, because all the different nooks and crannies of this story of Naomi and Ruth and Boaz, it seems that God was in control. Although the family may have been punished because of their wrong decision, to move out from the land which God had given them. Upon the two women's return, one belonging to that land and the other a pagan, God had stared them back onto the right road and home to where they would be both saved from even more tragedy because the women were without husbands or guardian redeemers and they would have suffered greatly left without someone to care for them and so we can even sense that this is where God has actually steered them to even in their fears that what might become of them if Naomi is not to marry the pagan sorry if, if Ruth is not to marry a pagan Ruth we know she'd vowed <clears throat> to Naomi she would not leave her and that made a vow that Naomi's God would be her God and so we wonder whether God had revealed himself to Ruth as she must have wondered about this God to whom she'd made this promise nevertheless she'd made the promise and God was in the circumstances that would unfold themselves. And there were so many coincidences that happened. And there were more than one. And when God is steering a course, every step along the way, he will bring about coincidences we might never have dreamt of. And then the penny drops and the door is open. I do happen to know that many who are listening today will have experienced this in their lives as Christians. And although things may feel strange, and for Ruth had felt strange and uncomfortable, she was willing to obey. If we find ourselves on a road that is strange to us, out of normal, it could be as a result of the virus, or the loss of someone we love, or bankruptcy we've experienced. There is no end to the different situations. Whoever we are, God may have been working in your life 
in some very strange and uncomfortable ways for some years. And here you're left thinking about it all and realizing that God has been with you every step of the way. And this is your moment to make your vow to God, even if you haven't made it otherwise. And if you have, then here is assurance of the way that God has been working in your life. God wants everyone to know, despite different races and tongues, or without a place to live, that if we cooperate with him, we will come to know, and we, we, we will come to know, and also we will bring many others to know Jesus, Christ as guardian, redeemer, us. This he was willing to do through the death on the cross and by his blood that was shed, the blood of Jesus, that holy blood, was to redeem us as he was our guardian redeemer, to redeem us so we will become heirs, joint heirs with him. So something for us all to think about. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, we give thanks for our great kinsman redeemer, our Saviour and Lord and High Priest. We give thanks that he would not leave us in our plight, wandering lost, but brought us back into his protection, his provision and his peace. Teach us, we pray, to see him, love him, honour and follow him, and forsaking all others to be faithful to him as long as we shall live. Amen. Amen. God of the world, we pray once more for the needs of our world. We pray about Hurricane Laura as it impacts the southern United States. And we pray for all in the path of that storm. We pray for emergency services as they seek to evacuate people and to deal with the impact of strong winds and flooding. We pray for those still left in the path of the storm, that they would be protected and shielded, rescued and defended, and that no more lives would be lost. We pray for a quick end to the storm, for a quick calming of winds and waves, and that the destruction would stop here and go no further. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for Niger and the floods going on there. And we pray for, once more, for a, a quick and effective response by emergency services and for the protection of all who are vulnerable. We pray, Lord, that those floods would be quickly and easily contained and that they would not do too much damage to homes or to livelihoods. And we pray for generosity on the part of the rest of the world, knowing how um, vulnerable much of the economic existence is for many affected by the floods. We pray for aid agencies to be able to bring quick help and support. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercies, we continue to pray for the impact of COVID-19 worldwide. And we pray especially at the moment for Argentina, Brazil, and the South American region. All those countries where infection rates are still high. We pray that you would enable them to arrest the spread of the virus. We pray that you would help them to provide good care to all who are infected. We give thanks for all who are laboring for vaccines and treatments, and we pray that you would speed their work, that you would bring 
effective vaccines quickly through the testing process to be available to all who need them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. The Lord of the Church, we pray for your Church and especially for the Church of England. We pray today for those dioceses that are struggling with financial hardships, especially Chelmsford and the Diocese of Sodor and Man. And we pray for them as they make uh, sweeping reductions in clergy and staff numbers and as they try and find a way to continue to serve you with shrinking resources. We pray that you would help them to know what to keep and what to cut what is essential and what is not essential. And that those dioceses and the whole Church of England would have wisdom to adapt wisely to a changing world and to continue to bear witness to your truth and your power and your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, we lift before you all those known to us who are in trouble or need or sorrow. We remember especially Jane and Shirley and Liz and Kay. And we'll have a moment of silence to remember others on our hearts. Lord, we lift these to you dear to us and dearer to you. And we pray that you would bring healing and help and hope. That you would mend their injuries, heal their illnesses, warm their hearts, make strong their faith. That you would help us to be loving carers and helpers to them. And that you would bless and sustain them and us through all the trials of this life to your kingdom in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect for today remembers John the Baptist. Almighty God, who called your servant John the Baptist, to be the forerunner of your Son in birth and in death. Strengthen us by your grace, that, as he suffered for the truth, so we may boldly resist corruption and vice, and receive with him the unfading crown of glory, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to pray to you together. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, all those things we have desired and asked for, as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Prayer during coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord. Under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>